Hi then, good evening one and all and welcome to another session on Journalist Hangout. It's May the 18th, 2018. Let's welcome you again. I am Citizen Jones Hussein. On the program this evening, Miyeti Allah blames governors for farmers' headers crisis as Boratei briefs President Buhari on military campaign against bandits and killer headsmen. Now, new PDP warns APC and presidency against ignoring its ultimatum as Adamu's group says they can do nothing. And later on, we'll share this with you. The Inspector General Idris denies stammering video, but Nigerians want original clip. Uh, let's tell you quickly, I'm hanging out with um, Ayo Makinde. Ayo, good evening, welcome. Good evening. And, Mr. and of course, uh, Wale Adeoye. I greet you, sir. Good evening. Nice to see you. Let me report, Jide is missing in action, so he's an MIA for the evening. <laughs> All right, the team is ready. I hope you are too. Okay, the willfulness of suspected killer headsmen and the defense of their satanic, uh, satanic act is like blaming your shadow for your sh Oh, come on, let, let, me, let me make it proper now. I take it from the top. You will please excuse me. Um, the willfulness of suspected killer headsmen and the defense of their satanic act is like blaming your shadow for the shape of your body. It is childish and sheepish. The Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria is passing the buck of its wantonness. The National Secretary of the Body, Baba Ngelezarma, says governors of some states are to blame for the frequent bloody clashes between the farmers and herdsmen. So let's have a debate this evening. Ayo? <clears throat> it's, um, it's interesting, the, the dimension that it's all going now. Uh, because the whole idea of this insecurity is not new on us. And, but there's, there's, uh, there's an interesting angle to it that many people have taken it over time. And I think from this perspective that it is becoming clearer. It is not an ethnic thing. It's not a religious thing. It's simply um, the fact that we have misunderstanding or disunderstanding or miscommunication or discommunication as the case may be. So once we can or take that out Or disconnect with reality. All of it revolves around this whole idea called communication. So once we can get that out of the, out of the way, I think we can, we can go somewhere. But what is saddening about the whole thing is, uh, as far as anyone is concerned, we don't care who solves the problem. What we care about is that the problem gets solved. People's lives have been lost. People's livelihoods have been lost. Some communities will never be the it's same again, again. Yeah. simply because of this unrest, which from all you know, obvious uh, understanding that we've, have, we've had so far, shouldn't have happened in the first place. Well, it, the argument by the group that uh, they are not opposed to, um, what do you call it now? Reserves. To reserve area, I mean, you know, they're not opposed to it, but that governors over time had failed to make those places uh, habitable for them, conducive for, for their grazing. Well, I think it's quite unfortunate that um, several years after this problem started, you know, we are still dealing with the, with the shadow instead of the substance. Yeah. We're here to put an end to, to the killings and to the carnage. And uh, Mieti Allah, for Mieti Allah to be blaming the governors, um, I think that is just one aspect of the problem. It's a multifarious challenge. The police has responsibilities. The president of the country has responsibilities. And also the people themselves, including Mieti Allah, which on some occasions has come out you know, in a way to defend you know, some of the aggressors. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, li like my friend said, the problem is multifarious. It's not just um, killings, uh, you know, violence and all that. It's also, there's also the religious angle into it. There is the ethnic angle into it. There is a security angle into it. There is uh, the aspect of 
people having free access to to illicit well, weapons. Well, I, I so, says no, they have nothing. What what the skirmishes have nothing to do with clan or tribe or whatever. For, for me, region. for me, I would like to look at it from a multifarious uh, perspective. That you know, uh, there are different forms of the of the campaign because when the TV, for instance, are saying that their home slums are being attacked, the people that are attacking them are not TV people. They are people. They are, they are non-TV people. So there, there is ethnic dimension there, you know. And of course, uh, when no, no, relate that churches to the fact are being that burnt we, down, we hear the grass, uh, the grass mosque in, are being destroyed. I, I agree. This, yeah. When we reconcile what you are saying with yeah. the fact that Benue State, I hear the grass there is very lush green. It's very very lush. Yeah, the Benue Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so. Well, I, it, it's. Could the, have been any other state. Yeah, the, the, the TV people are indigenous to Benue. They have been there for over 3,000 years. It's their central territory. So if anybody wants to come and graze in Benue, for instance, you must seek the prior and informed consent of the original owners of the land. And of course, we have been saying this over and over again, that a place like Bronu State, that is about, you know, uh, more than 10 times the size of Lagos, has enough land to accommodate people that want to graze their cattle. So this idea of going to territories and hoping that you can take over, uh, you can have dominion over those territories as if, you know, anywhere that you are, is, you can just take it over. And you are coming from Chad, coming from Mali. I think it is not fair. People must have respect for the fact that there are indigenous people in certain territories. And you must respect their values, you must respect their customs and their culture. So we have this form of clash of values, clash of civilization, which I think uh, is a fallout of uh, the fact that people don't have respect for the territory of other. I, I, I would, other, I would, other, I would, other. I would uh, cue behind uh, a civilized mindset as opposed to uh, ownership of territories for one reason. Not that ownership of territories is not important, but I would cue behind civilization and um, uh, constituted authorities for one particular reason. Um, when the when the colonialists came to Nigeria. They didn't come to colonize our territories per se. They came to colonize our minds. And through our minds, they got our substance. So that, that, that one, that once we cleared that one out of the way, we recognize that it is not as much about the territory as it is about the people themselves. Having said that, I also recognize and understand I agree with the fact that yes, there have been occasions where this whole skirmish have been religious and ethnic and all, but on the long run, what is it about? It is not really about religion, it's about ownership. That's the way I see ownership this. of what? Ownership of whatever anyone can lay, lay, lay claim to. Why do we have unrest in the in the Middle East? It's simply because some people want to take over whatever it is that is not theirs. Now, if there are constituted authorities. And these considered authorities are being obeyed and lived by, by the people in that environment themselves. There's a system that is constant and that, there is, that is running. For God's sake, no one will come into your home, Citizen Jones, and tell you where to put your slippers. Nobody. There is a place where you park cars. There, no one will come to your living room and say, this is where I want to eat, when there is a dining room. I, I, but again... Grazing in this country pre predates us. As yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I remember, I'm sure you do, in the 70s. For God's sake, who cared whether where any 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 cattle grazed? Yeah. We uh, I schooled except, I schooled in Oyo. Except if they trampled on your farm. Mm. I schooled mm. in Oyo town, okay, and I my, my hometown is Awe. We saw the cattle everywhere literally everywhere because there were this is africa there were grazing flows everywhere i mean but civilization has brought some measure of control because areas in which you had lush green stuff you had vegetation they are now being taken over by other things um, uh, industries buildings schools and all of those things so the number of uh, areas where they can graze graze have reduced and, and population is and exploding. population well, of course po population is the what is responsible for these buildings and everything coming up because people have to live in houses and stuff. So once we can understand this, the, the history of these things, it is a long-term problem. He said it the other time. It's a long-term problem of us not foreseeing or, or, or forecasting where things can be within social time and social time. Back in my, in my hometown, we, there was a bad habit, 
bad habit of um, what's it called? Dung. Cow dung. Yeah. Littering the whole town. And of course, we had local government, we had state government, we have councils and everything. Who did anything about it? So now that this is becoming an issue, let us look beyond the sentiments of the issues. Let's look at the realities on ground. Now, there is something that the, the, the information minister has said and cited um, two examples where, she, where, where he said that, for instance, those who might, I'm, I'm quoting him now from a report on the, uh, those who might be tempted to view the clashes between farmers and herdsmen from the ethno religious prism. I will cite two instances. He cited the example of Zamfara State, where, where, uh, uh, where those who, who, the owners of the cattle are Muslims, the people whose cattle, uh, uh, who have the farmlands, they are also Muslims. It, it takes away the, it, that possibility yeah, of yeah. looking at it from the religious prison. He also cited the example of Kebi State, where 70% of those who are in jail are there due to the clashes between farmers and husbands. The farmers whose crops are eaten by cows are Muslim Fulani. The herders whose cows eat the crops are Muslim Fulani. Same religion, same, same ethnicity. People are listening to us and watching us from all over Nigeria. Anyone who has anything to repudiate this fact, please let them call in. Well, so there must be a middle ground mm. in all of this yeah. where both herders and state governments can, can find uh, where to stand, a common ground. Yeah, the, the, to, find, to find a common ground, we first of all need to be very honest with ourselves. We don't need to gloss over the issues. We must pull the strand and look at each strand on its own specific merit. And that's why I'm saying that it is not real, it, it, we are not being honest with ourselves and we just dismiss it as if, you know, we, we don't look at the different trends, no. you know, in the crisis, no. you know. And it is by looking at that issue holistically, understanding the various forms of the conflict that we can come to you know an agreement on how to resolve the problem because this is a very serious problem it has to do with the survival of people it has to do with food security it has to do with environment you know you are talking of people who are forest dependent mm -hmm. they are hubs for health that is where you know from this, this uh, you know this bush that they get the hubs that they use for their health the streams where they drink their water everything polluted by people bringing their cows you know so in some places, people can't go to farms any longer, you know. So it affects their food security, their survival. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't just come and say, look, uh, you know, I mean, then, you know, taking over people's land and all that, then you say it's not about territory, it's not about, you know. So we, we have to be very honest with this problem. I, I, and I, I think that is the only way mm -hmm. that we can address the problem in a very honest and dispassionate manner. Look at the, the statement made by the defense minister that we should accommodate foreigners in our midst. I mean, look at that, that statement. Meaning that they are foreigners, then we should accommodate them. So it means government which, officials... Which, which is not a problem if they yeah. came in through the appropriate, appropriate But when people are armed with AK-47, you know, coming to your territory and burning down homes and all that, then it's just not fair. Almost every week, 50 people, 100 people are being killed. And we are wondering, you know, government needs to have a kind of people-driven solution. Communities themselves must be involved in peace resolution mechanisms. It's not about government sitting now in Abuja. People, people on their own must be engaged. These people have lived together for thousands of years. And when they had conflict, even before Nigeria was um, emerged in 1914, they used to resolve this conflict, even when there was no government. Yeah. So government shouldn't assume that <coughs> it's their own problem, that they just sit down in Abuja in the, in the comfort of their offices, and then they can resolve the problem. They have to go to these communities, bring the stakeholders together, the, the farmers, you no, know, let, let, let them sit down together, let everybody express fear, his fears and his aspirations. You know, so it's not something that you can resolve without you know the people themselves getting involved in. You know, uh, in, in, in the second the leg to the report is having to do with the chief of army staff briefing Mr. President on Security how far is it? Yes, yes. So can we break that? Uh, the, yeah, he began the, the broaching by making reference to one of the major um, uh, security challenge that we faced in, in time. I, I'll begin this part of this conversation by referring to a, a constant fact that it's like for every government there is there is an Achilles heel <laughs> in Nigeria. I can and remember. <laughs> yes, there will mm. always be something that they will 
carry like their own dumbbell that they're mm -hmm. going to take around. I remember from the days of, uh, was it Obasanjo, uh, the Ali Must Go time, uh, following that was... 78. Uh, yes, following that was uh, Shagari's government, which had to deal with austerity measures. Following that was um, Obasanjo's, I'm sorry, um, what's, what's it called? Um, Buhari. Buhari. Okay. The first coming of Buhari who had to deal with indiscipline, which has not ended till now. Following that is um, Babangida's uh, government on June 12, uh, Abacha, the, the dust is yet <laughs> to settle. And so many others. Over the years, over the years, Obasanjo, the second coming of Obasanjo has OD. Um, Yara Dua didn't live long Z enough. Zach, but, OD and Zaki uh, Biam. Zaki Biam. Uh, so on and on and on and on like that. Now, this government is dealing with two inherited one and is pretty much having its own, which is this uh, farmers, herdsmen, clashes and stuff like that. One of the challenges that I have seen as far as government is concerned is communication. People Between need to communicate whatever it is that they have Government in and the governed. And government and government the governed, and primarily. And when we talk yeah. about government here, I'm not talking about the head of government. I'm talking about the entire government apparatus, part of which is this uh, Buratai guy that we're talking about. There is a way to talk to people. And generally, with all respect, it's his training, the, the, the language of force, it's global. I, I, I've seen enough of American movies to know that when the military wants to deal with any issue, it's force. I mean, it's understandable. But when in a democracy, the number one thing is communication. There is always a way to appeal to the, it's the Yoruba say there is a masculine, sorry, there is a feminine, sorry. There is always a way to communicate with people, say things to people in a way that they will understand. If you're not diplomatic about it, it's fine. Get someone who is. You don't have to be the one to do the talking all the time. You understand? Of course, naturally people want to hear what the top, the head man, the top man wants to say and, and all of that. But in briefing, Mr. President, whatever it is, you understand the military language. Both of you understand we don't, okay? Saying to us that we need to be able to accommodate people, that's fine. How did these foreigners get into the nation? Number two, do foreigners have the right to go around with AK-47 on the streets of Nigeria? Is that permissible by the military, by the army which he, call, he, he, which he, call, which he it, controls? It, it, it is that... Yeah, is as a per permissible society, a permissive society. We are permissive, on condition. There is always a reason to do some stuff. There is always a, there's always a way to, I mean, you, you can't come into my home on your terms. You come into my home on my uh, terms. Uh, quickly, let me take Morrison. He's in Lagos and he wants to join us. Let's go, sir. Welcome. Good evening, good evening George. I greet you, sir. Gentlemen. Yeah. My name is Morrison David from Uganda. Okay. I want to say here, Jones, uh, this issue has been on ground. The issue of harassment has been with Nigeria. But what is the cause of the bloating at this time Buhari is in power? We cannot understand. And somebody has <coughs> muted about ethnic cleansing. Those who are religious or are ethnically inclined, who believe that other human beings have no right to live, that they can evade their place, doesn't think the way we are analyzing it that uh, could be that uh, they don't tolerate their brothers. Who tolerates M each other? M M Morrison, what do you yourself believe here and now? Mm, what I believe is that there is a, 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 an agenda that has never been exposed to the public that this husband decided to you, you know, implement now the, the, this is, power. Yeah, I, I want to say you are an opinion leader. And when you opinionate this way, you are, you are misleading people. Not Ke misleading. Oga, care must be taken. Ke this, this are not, these are times that will try men's souls. Just where do you, where, I'm wondering where you got that from. So, it be, be so it's, it's, it's not a shouting match, but I'm saying... Well, it, I, that is not true. That cannot be true. I'm, I'm sure in your heart of hearts, it, it, it cannot be true. Because you cannot tell me, Morrison, that Mr. President, or, or, anyone, at that or any, anyone for that matter, can work so hard as to win the presidential seat mm. and set out to exterminate, please, please, please. Or to even we, scatter we, the we, nation. It's we, we have gone past that stage. I beg you. But thank you. Thank you. Again, 
mm. communication. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, the. I, I mm. said it, mm. and we, we can exploit. You sure. can exploit sure. that now. Yeah, the language mm. you speak at a time like this. Yeah, is very important. Must be mm. such that will. Yeah, the I mean, briefing the president is normal. He's the commander in chief of the armed forces. You know, I mean, when you go to that kind of uh, conflict, you need to go back and uh, come back and brief the. But, but we also need to advise the government that uh, winning a war is easy, but winning the peace is almost the most difficult thing. Mm. And that is why fighting um, armed conflict and all that, it's not just about defeating them militarily. There must also be um, sociological aspect. There must be economic aspect. There must be you know, an economic roadmap on how to, uh, bring, to, I mean, to, to, to bring back people you know, in a way that they'll be included in terms of governance and provision of the essentials of life. Because that is a very important thing. So when you spend so much money on buying arms and all that, you must also think about the economic aspect. Because people want to survive. They want to live. They want peace. They want, to, they want food on their table. So after you have resolved, I mean, after you have resolved the conflict, you have defeated the insurgent, you must also think of how to rebuild those territories that they, they destroyed. They, they want to win the peace. Yeah, so there must be an economic program apart yeah. from the military strategy that the government oh, is using. Okay, then we'll take this breather and return. Please stay with us. You see, and the presidency, against ignoring its ultimatum, and uh, we're going to share that with you very shortly. All right, gentlemen, let's bury the story. And uh, the Miyeti Allah says, governors are to blame because they are not tidying up um, provisions for ranching colony. You know, the, the, the ranch, which ranching we understand is universal. Mm -hmm. So they would rather, government took a second look at preparing these ranches so it will be agreeable to them. Ranches are businesses. Cattle rearing is a business. The, 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 the foremost ranches in the world run into hundreds of millions of dollars in ownership. Ted Turner, owner of CNN, has one, one of the best, one of the most vast in the world. So they are not just like one or two uh, kilos, uh, uh, one or two acres of land. Oh, but we, we very, very, very bring, large bring bases. So here. they I need hear, to recognize. I hear a former president of this country owns a thriving exactly, ranch. Exactly. Up, up, so up there in the um, would you now say that the governors should, what is the government going to get from owning a ranch? If government is going to take over some people's ranches, what are they going to tell the owners? But are the ranches there? Wally, are the ranches there already? Well, of course, we used to have ranches. There was one in Kenji, you know, established by the Northern People's Congress. There was one in, a, in the Southwest, Akono, in Akoko, established by Shiva Obafe Naulo, and even one in Akwaibom State. These were established in the 50s. So it's not, it's not a new thing, yeah. Yeah. you know. But the fact of the matter is that state governments have primary responsibility to their people. There is a House of Assembly that must debate whether they need ranches or not. Thank you. So it's not Miyeti Allah that will tell Benue State or, or Kogi State. It is the state and the representative that will decide whether they want ranching or not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a business. One needs to clear that out of the way. And so uh, it's not like a right for, for, the, for the cattle uh, rearers. It's a, they are running a business. Yeah. Cattle rearing. Oh, 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 uh, and and you're in business be? to make profit. Business so to make if profit. government invests in a ranch, it should expect to make profit. All right, so the debate must continue. But let's tell you, let's go to our next story. I ran into this absorbing saying by a Brazilian lyricist and novelist, Paulo Coelho. He says, let me quote him. There are two kinds of idiots. Those who don't take action because they have received a threat and those who think they are taking action because they are issuing a threat. So the internal wrangling within the APC ranks came to a head when the new PDP and PDP issued a seven-day ultimatum to the leadership of the party. The group's spokesperson, Timmy Frank, is belching a new threat. He says, let me quote him, 
ignore our ultimatum at your own peril. The coming days are engaging and they are equally as ominous. <laughs> well, it's interesting. This group names itself the new PDP. So we already know where they belong to. You know, that means they are not part of the APC. So I think the agenda is clear. And I've read the statements of this group. The, their position is that they are not having fair share of the national cake. That they were given only two ministers. The one for Minister for uh, Women Affairs. And then uh, Mr. Honorable Roti Mamichi, Minister for Transport. And that they, they need more positions within the framework uh, of government. You think so, they are fair there? Let's look at... Uh, the sharing, sharing, the sharing, you know, yeah. distribution. So, the so, Senate president is a member of that group. Yeah, but they are claiming that he was selected and that, you know, it, it was not by selection. So, but you see, <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is that the agenda of this group is not propelled by public interest. It's propelled by parochial, individual, selfish interest. So, they are not talking about maybe how they want to resolve the violence, you know, in some parts of the country. They are not talking about poverty. They are not even talking about corruption. They are not talking about job creation. So I think this is a bunch of self-seeking <coughs> individuals who just feel that they have been let down by the government. They are not having enough share of the cake. But then we should not underestimate their capacity to wreak havoc within the, yeah. within the APC because yeah. the strongholds of the APC in the north, you know, Kano, uh, Kaduna, Sokoto, uh, Sokoto uh, maybe apart from Kasina, uh, of course, even Kogi, all these states where APC appears to be very strong, you know, there are sharp divisions, you know, along the line of uh, new PDP and APC. After Lagos, the next state with the highest number of votes is Kano, then followed by Kaduna and then Rivers. And all these states where you have very high number of voters, you know, there are contain, you know, contentious grounds for the two trends. So I think, you know, even though they may not be standing on a, 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 on principles, we should not underestimate their capacity, you know, to become an abatros, mm -hmm. you know, for the regime. Uh, are you otherwise? We are looking at another uh, ship jumping. Well, I don't think there was the jumped ship in the first place. <laughs> you know, I think, I mean, that's why they are still old, holding on to their former, their old identities. You know. Uh, for to even be calling yourself new PDP in the APC means you recognize that you, you still have your ownership. It's like a compound. I, I imagine they are simply reminding the APC leadership look, don't forget we came here. in mm. as <coughs> the new PDP. So we can just as but well they, go back they can't home. Be, they can't be new anymore. That's, in other words, we can just as well go back home. That's what you know, I, I, I sense there. So the, the way I, I would look at this is just as um, Wale has said, to recognize the fact that there is a difference between governance and, and politics. politics. And it's this politicking that some people are yet to even abandon or, or let to lie in the first place. That's the number one problem that we have. When are we going to begin governance? This is 2018. Mm. In a few months from now, we are going into another election. You didn't raise all these issues until now. It is now that we are looking, people are looking to another um, election. Uh, are, have you for, forgotten one of the 48 laws of power? Which is mm -hmm. remind me a there sense of timing. <laughs> you know. So anyway, my, my, own, my problem here is I'm not even afraid of, of ship jumping. What I'm afraid of, what, what's, what scares me the most in all of the things that are happening in this nation is the electorate. You know why? The electorate only reads the headlines. They don't read the body of the story. So once they see a headline, they just conjecture the rest in their minds. And with that, they take a decision. You know this. We are journalists. We know the challenges. We know that you know, one, of the, one of the weapons that anyone would use against anybody in, this, in, in our apology for now is poverty. Deny a man of, of money promise him a little something, he will report anything. Forget ownership. Mm. He owns the pen. And <laughs> once he can, I mean, he will write a nice story, the editor will see it, He's, the editor has to deal with how many stories in one newspaper, so or how many, how many news reports in one bulletin. You understand? So he has so many things to deal with. So to sit down and be looking, what's your intention here? What's your intention here? Where, where, where is that time? Ask Gideon, he told you, he will tell you. You understand? So it's only when you are able to, to sit down 
and look at all of these issues that you will know that the person that's most endangered is the electorate because they will not always have all the sides of the story and they will not be able to make the right judgment, the right judgment call when they when the Well, are we sure what this NPDP wants? They want to, they want the president out of power by all means necessary. Wow. And they are not doing it, you know, in a way that gives, that should inspire anyone, you know. Because we all know are how... Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> because, that, you know... That, that, that there might be a big drummer boy. Yeah, Most somewhere. Certainly. No, Most because, because if, if they have come up with agenda, so look, the president is not fighting corruption enough, yeah, they are, you know, there's uh, poverty in the land, then we can begin to listen to them. But you are saying that, look, you know, we are give, you are giving to me to because you are not having your fair... They are not even concerned about... Mm -hmm. In fact, the interest of the people is, is nothing to them. So and I think there must be some level of decorum. Even if you want to wage a particular battle, there are, there, I mean, there, are, there are ways you need to come up, not just to, in fact, with, with that kind of audacity, to say that you know, we don't have enough ministerial positions, then you know, we are leaving the party. And then in that process, you delayed the budget. We can now see the reasons why the budget was delayed for so long, why people are being summoned by the Senate. You know, there are, there are underlying factors where they, you know, they are taking this, they took this, some of these positions, which at the end of the day, Nigerians have to suffer for them. People don't have light, no electricity, you know, a lot of people are poor. And then you are not talking about economic reforms, you are just talking about individuals that are not getting their fair share. So I think it's quite unfortunate. I, I, sometimes in, in politics, it, it, it is said that two times two is not necessarily four, two but 22. Two, two times two depends the answer to that question depends yeah. on who is marking. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> most of the things you, you see and hear about politics and in politics are so designed. Oh, most, see, um, I, 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 one of the persons that I admire as a person, not for any... Not as a politician. Not as a politician is, well, maybe as a politician, okay. or I call it a tactician, is Tinubu. Um... I have done a bit in this industry, in, in, in journalism, to have seen some things and followed some stories and have seen a trajectory along politics. One of the challenges that I see that the APC has is that of size. APC is a, is a, is a I don't know if APC will be able to live as long as the PDP did over that, those number of years. Why? Because um, the PDP, you know, was in power for so long and was able to, um, f they were able to fight, resolve, fight, resolve over the years and they were able to keep on the leadership at the national level for very, very long. But at this level, APC's first four years and there is so much rancor it's only pointing to one thing there, ha there, there hasn't been any uh, they haven't had enough time to cement relationships they haven't had enough time to mend fences they didn't have enough time to mend fences before this election you know uh, thing came up, came up so this should also be another opportunity for all the 50 other political, political parties, parties to yeah. try to even make a case Come together. Sheikh Madeni, you know, I, I read something that he said. Look, this is an opportunity for anyone who is serious about, as, as an opposition party. Forget APC, forget PDP. You guys come together. You are 50 something in number. Come together and form a voice. You know how long it took um, well, 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 if different it, political if, parties? 50 coming together in Nigeria. Well, it's not going to happen. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> the problem of who leads. And uh, the chances of having new, you know, parties in, in, in the major, you, you know. See, the politics in Nigeria is like a maze, walking through a yeah. maze field, yeah. and, and mm. you, you are not too sure. And it's, um, a serious political party will have started as far back as 2015. We have just some few months to the election now. So if any party is serious, we should have seen those signals years back, not just when there are few, you months. know, months to the election. Uh, and yeah. the, the 50 political parties, don't forget that some of them are footnotes of, AP, of uh, the register of the big political parties. Yes. Yeah. They were registered as fronts, you know, to, to, you know, so that when there's problem here, then they, 
you know. So, but, but I think with, it's unfortunate that uh, with labor, you know, and uh, huge labor size in Nigeria, the Nigerian Labor Congress, we thought that a, a party driven by the, work, the working class probably could have been an alternative that we can, we can explore. Yeah. But as it is, 2019 is going to be a, con the con a contest between PDP and APC. I don't think the possibility of a third force making serious impact except the new PDP, you know, mm. align with another. another one. But then, I think as it is now, as of today, it's going to be between uh, PDP Let, and APC. Let's get to hear Prince is, is in Oyo State. Does he agree with you? Good evening, Prince. Welcome. Yeah, good evening. I greet you. I'm grateful for what you people are doing out there. And I think you've dealt with the issue the way it's supposed to be dealt with. Thank, thank you. Now, if you look at the ideologies of APC, you will tend to agree with me that they don't have any ideology so far. As a political party, what they have in place is a makeshift okay. arrangement between the power breakers. And that was what brought them to power. So you can now see how things are playing out. Individual interest is now against party ideology. And since they don't have one, you see everybody going its own way. But what is happening today is good for the country because at the end of the day, it will bring out the right people that will do things for Nigeria. And Nigerians will now begin to benefit the dividends of democracy. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, thank, thank, thank you, sir, Prince. Um, I, I, Mr. President, asked the national leader of the party, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to fight the fire. Is he climbing a mountain? Um, I don't know if it's just a mountain. <laughs> I think it's bigger than that from all obvious, um, uh, all obvious facts on, on ground. One thing that I think one can see is, there are, is that there are so many, so many perspectives to this issue. So many perspectives that it's difficult to be able to pin it to one thing. And so when you're looking at... Um, uh, uh, I don't know how to translate this in, in English. The Yorubas call it egbinote. In other words, it, it, it's, it's so hydra-headed that as you are cutting one, another one is ready. to of intrigues. Uh, thank you. Mm. As you are cutting one off, another one is ready. To, you deal with that one, another one is ready. ready so they, 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 it's a humongous challenge that um, Ashwaju Bola uh, 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 These has. challenges are man-made. Yes. But sometimes, you know, when um, a man has caused so much problem for himself, you need God <laughs> to deal with this. So right now, the, 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 the challenges the, the, to resolve this issue, the only thing that can achieve it for now would be compromise. To say that there is going to be tranquility, what you can only have now is a semblance of peace. To say there is going to be tranquility in the polity, uh, in, in, within the ranks of the APC before the elections is asking for um, Cinderella to become a real human being. <laughs> All right, we, we have Yakub. He has joining, uh, joined us from Lagos. Yakub, welcome. <coughs> yeah, this is yeah. I greet you. Yep. Yeah, good evening to the guests in the studio. Good, good evening, sir. I think uh, one of your guests have already hit the nail at the right place. You see, this is a selfish people, selfishness people. Why am I saying that? If you look at uh, the people that first grant the interview in that uh, out, you see Baraji, and then look at the left and the right part of Baraji, you see all people stand with Baraji there, they are House of Breath members. And then this is the people are now telling Nigerians that they are not get their own cake in the APC. Come to think of it. The, the senior president is coming from the new PDP. The governor of Sokoto State is a PDP. The partner of uh, Kano State is also a, from new PDP. So many. I mean, the, 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 the speaker is. Mm, See, this, the speaker I is. I tell you, it's, it's, it's really, really a selfish interest. I can mention one guy that has already been with the president, Muhammad Bari, from inception. That is an uh, uh, engineer, uh, Buba Galadima. It has never complained for a day that it has never get its own case from the ASCP then to CPC. Up to now, the man has never even got one position. And to now, Buba Galadima, there is a position from 1960s. See, what I can see, coming election is this. 
Whether we like it or not, these people have already made up their mind. Mm. No matter mm. what Ashwadubala mm. Metinubu mm. are doing in the Reconciliation yes. Committee, he can never reconcile this kind of a people because okay. the one leg in it is already moved out. Whether they will join PDP, never can tell. But I can see them realize with another political party. Mm -hmm. Because going back to PDP, they can never get what they are looking for. That's Th thank you, Yakub. Wale, <laughs> did they need an ultimatum? Let, let, let me bring it yeah. home. Yeah. If your wife desires to leave you, mm -hmm. she does not announce, yeah. I, go, I go go, I go go. <laughs> Apparently, she wants you to, to warm up to, to her. Did, yeah. did, did the NPDP need the ultimatum in the first place? Well, I, I think uh, even if you want to give an ultimatum, maybe democratically you can say, well, there's nothing bad with that, but seven days ultimatum. Mm -hmm. you know, how, what, did you, what kind of you know, peace reconciliation can come up within a period of seven days? So it's like they actually don't want peace. It's obvious. And I think it's a group that if you give them, if you give them an inch, they will take a yard. Mm. If you give them a, a yard, they will take a mile. If you give them a, a mile, they will take the whole thing from you. I don't think there's anything anyone can do to pacify them. I also think it's a failure of leadership on the part of the, uh, the president, I mean, the chairman, national chairman of, of APC, you know, uh, Oyegun. So I think if one is in a position to advise the parties, the first thing they need to do is to change that leadership. Because over the years, I've not seen meaningful intervention coming from the national uh, the chairman of APC, which is quite unfortunate. Even with this ultimatum, he has not come out with any position to say that, okay, let us resolve this thing, you know, to even make a policy statement. So I think it's quite unfortunate. The APC needs to change that leadership before it is too late. I, 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 I want to go back. I just underlined it. <laughs> back to the quote. There are two, ty two kinds of idiots. <laughs> those who don't take action because they have received a threat and those who think they are taking action because they have issued a threat. The first group, I would not assume or imagine that they are not do doing anything. Okay. Sincerely. Mm -hmm. um, the people in the national, in the presidency, the second arm of government, the executive, <laughs> Look at them, they are, they are eggheads, they are, they are well-schooled people. You, you are taking the matter home. Uh, that's, they, they, they are, are well-schooled people. I mean, Professor Shimbajo is there, SAN, uh, Fashola is there, SAN, fire me even well, before, after he resigns from that seat now, um, Engige, so many of them. So I do not think that they are, doing, they are not doing anything. I think that it is something that they are taking serious, but even if someone is saying he's coming to fight you, no matter how scared you are, citizen Jones, you don't look scared. Mm. <laughs> you say, okay, come, you come. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that when you wear a bold face, the person is looking at, okay, come now. Meanwhile, inside you, you are, you are petrified. I don't think that this is not the, the matter is, is is not being resolved. I think it's been handled one way or another. Uh, Wally said the other time make, made a reference to the to the passage of the of the um, budget. of the budget at this time. Took how long and why? A bargaining chip? Come on. How do you bury this? Well, I, I believe the presidency needs to act very fast to save itself. It's getting late in the day. If the president had been more, maybe more tactical initially, he could have been shown interest in who emerged as the senior president. And even who emerged, I think it was a bit non committal And you can now see the consequence. So if you're a professional boxer like uh, Tyson, you want to fight emotion, the, the strategy you are going to use in the ring, you can't apply it in motion. If you apply it, your you are going to have a bloody nose. <laughs> they say the hand way you take catch hand a house fly. Yeah. You know go use that same hand. Top of catch. Is that no, no, no. <laughs> catch a bee. Yes. Okay. Uh, your left no. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so again, let's continue the debate. But I tell you in politics anything is possible. More so in our jurisdiction. Now, our last topic. There is a natural quirk in man whereby his neighbor's shame becomes his relish. The more intense the scandal, the more enamored he becomes. It's natural. A widely circulated supposed gaffe by the country's police chief on the social media splits opinion sharply in the country, and many folks fancy themselves punning the viral footage. The IG Ibrahim Idris, you know, has designed the video 
portraying him as struggling to read from a prepared speech. The man says the video was doctored, Ayo. Um, I, I've had not a few, not a, not a little, um, uh, I've been very, very much interested in this and I've looked at um, the whole thing. Uh, they, they say, Were you persuaded from the first minute? I, I didn't even give it much thought mm. for one reason. Speech is not action. Your speech doesn't send Boko Haram away from Nigeria. It doesn't resolve the um, skirmishes between um, herdsmen and farmers. For me, that it's a, it's a, it's a. I, it's I hear there's a, a speech altering software. Is, I, is this, I, I this? will, I will give because you. Because you, you are. I will give your producers one, you know, eventually, which I saw, and I'm sure they are probably also aware. They so doctored the voice, the face, the mouth of Obama. We saw the person reading this, this script, and we saw the way they manipulated Obama's mouth to, to look like the man that is reading it. But and you would think it was him. You would think it was Barack Obama that took that speech. Pause there, Wale, as a print journalist, yeah. did you read this anywhere in the media? In, uh, in the print not media? In the, not in the mainstream media. Absolutely. I'm it, asking pointedly, yeah. did the uh, print media mainstream report this, yeah. this event? No. no. Why? <laughs> I think a, prof a, a journalist, a professional journalist, you know that the Inspector General of Police was not appointed yesterday. He had made speeches. We have watched him on television. We have seen him on, on screen. People, editors, you know, who, who had, I, I had met him before. And then you look at his background. He joined the, you know, police in 1984. You know, that's about 34 years. And then he, has, he served in East Timor, United Nations Mission. In fact, he was given merit of, you know, merit of order by the president of East Timor for meritorious service. And then this man who attended ABU, he studied agriculture, and then attended University of Maiduguri to, to read law, second degree. So it's 1964 that we have been having IGs of police. He's one of the most educated. So suddenly, if there is a script that the man didn't speak well, I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not going to jump into a conclusion to believe that this is authentic. I, I've had the opportunity to meet him you know, in an encounter. And in fact, he spoke for almost about 30 minutes without reading from a test. So I, I found him a very intelligent person. You know? So I, I think. But, you know, we are in a country where people's mind could be easily manipulated. Absolutely. People just saw it and they don't ask questions. They just start circulating it. Yeah. You know, especially because people are prejudiced already. Absolutely. You know, so, but I think we need to be very careful it, it, that it, it, IT is becoming a weapon that people use oh, no, for, it always to serve political ends. It always will be. You know, but you hear things like the man is suffering from what they call dyslexia. Someone can come now, um, Mr. Hussein, and say that you have... A frog in your throat and they'll give it one name. Mm. Hmm. Anything can be said, it, this is election year, anything can happen now. So if there is any public officer who has any measure of influence, anything to discredit the fellow would fly. But, but we, it, yeah. I'm, I'm, which is why I said the other time that as a people, let us not allow ourselves to be moved by every wind mm. that comes around. First thing that I recognize is no mainstream medium took the news. No mainstream medium. For me, that's a flag. Number two, we all have our bad days. I mean, you have gone, you, there are people who have gone for interviews who are natural orators. Mm. You would go for an interview and the person will be struggling with words. Oh, yeah. These things happen. Mr. Hussein, you've been but in this it, industry it, for it, many years. Here, this dyslexia is said to be an unexpected difficulty in learning. Dyslexia takes away an individual's ability to read quickly and automatically and to retrieve, retrieve spoken words easily. So, sorry, so, 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 someone, something happened here earlier while you were taking the, the uh, My opener, yeah. Something happened. Was that this, this what did you call it? Was I, that? I, I'll give you. Do <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So yeah. these things do happen. You can stumble over words. 
There are words that you know. I mean, this has happened to you now, Jones. You want to write also. Ayo, spell also for me. Also that you've been writing for how many years? A-L-S-O. You are looking for it in your head. These things happen. All right. So, but any agenda to discredit anyone for whatever goal is usually what we, the people, should be looking out for. Well, it, it, the, the, the popular opinion is then bring the original text, bring the original clip. Well, w will I, it make any difference? Yeah. Well, I, I, for me, I, I think this shouldn't be an issue that we should be struggling to, Thank you. to validate because anybody can do animation. You know, once there's a statement that this is not real, I don't think now asking them to bring the original. All we just need to do is to probably produce the tapes where I had spoken on so many public, uh, you know, <laughs> for and then people can see that this is not, you know, because even you know, it's, it's, if if he has any affliction, it should it's not, it's not, it's not going to be spontaneous. Mm. It has to be built over a period of time. Yeah. This event took place yeah. on Monday. Yes, and the event was the commissioning of the force. Technical Intelligence yeah. Unit, yeah. Wally Ayo Jones. Yeah. There suddenly were journalists there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we produce the video and we find out that the man has dyslexia. How does it help solve any problem? Well, how does it solve a problem? How does it resolve an issue? We are so picky with itchy ears for nonsense. When Mr. President was abroad for so many weeks, people were saying, bring him back home, bring him back home, bring him back home. He had an act, we had an acting president who was not just acting by appendage, acting indeed, going all over the nation, doing some of the, mo making moves that even the president, substantive president, wasn't making. But he had the authority of Mr. President to act in that capacity, went all over the place. He was doing well. What were we looking for? Distracting ourselves while legislations were being passed while actions were being taken that didn't have begin to have any effect on us until after the dust had settled and we were interested in things that were not relevant wally bury this now yeah, the original video is already in circle i think i saw it this morning sent to someone will still come to you and tell the, you the, the original one the event that took place and when you compare the two you'll be able to get your facts they will still tell you it's not original. Uh, some, some, some people are still arguing it. <laughs> my, uh, my, I would just <laughs> again resolve, you know, with, by saying to us, there are many, many opportunities for business for people. Small and medium enterprises is the only way economies in the world grow. It's what Donald Trump is trying to build in America of today. It's what we have opportunities all over, uh, all around us to, to, to pay attention to, grow personal businesses for ourselves, have second streams of income, and not be interested in things that are not relevant. Whether we like it or not, this man will not be sacked because he wasn't speaking English well, and his, his pension is not going to be taken away. Let's be interested in things that are more important. Thank you. All right, l let me thank uh, Wale Adeye for coming. Many thank thanks you very for much. Time. And uh, no less so are your marking day. Many thanks for your time. Thank you, Citizen Jones. It, it, it's a Friday, but, but uh, I quarrel with a Friday because it's too close to a Monday. <laughs> and a Monday is too far from a Friday. Friday. Yet you people say, thank God it's Friday. Oh, we do so say... So Fri Friday is here. You are thinking of a Monday. We'll have to time. ask um, HR what his surname is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Um, let me close like this. I share the words of uh, Oscar Wilde. He said the tragedy of the human race it is that it will eventually die of civilization. One of the tools is the internet. Really? Nigerians are wonderful people. We can do so many things. I guess we can do better than we are attempting to do now. Bye bye now. On behalf of the Backroom Boys, we say take care of yourself. Enjoy your weekend. But then watch a repeat broadcast of this particular edition at 11 this evening and uh, watch journalists hang out on other platforms showing on the screen now and on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. And uh, I am Citizen Jones Usain. Bye bye now. <laughs>